So I hope uh, that you have uh, enjoyed the lunch and now you're recharged to learn some new things about uh, how can you optimize your WordPress day-to-day -day tasks by automating them. Uh, a few words about me. My name is Ivan and I'm working at SiteGround at the moment. Uh, I've been with the company for five years and I have pretty much went through uh, most of the technical departments there from technical support then uh, doing some DevOps and QA tasks and right now I'm working as an enterprise solutions engineer where we are building, designing and maintaining uh, infrastructures for our biggest clients. Uh, I'm sure that you have heard some of them, for example, Yoast SEO or WP Forms or Monster Insights. Uh, so yeah, and uh, actually in this uh, position I have learned how important it is to automate, automate the tasks that we are completing daily in order to uh, have better time management and save time for more significant, significant tasks. And uh, there is a short summary of what this talk is gonna, going to be about. First of all, uh, I'm say a few words about automation in general. Then uh, I will introduce you to Ansible and uh, tell you uh, how it, WordPress can benefit from it. And then I have uh, three videos with practical examples how Ansible is uh, run, how uh, you can write your configs and so on. So let's start with automation and uh, by automation I mean the use, uh, to, uh, use software to create repeatable instructions that will reduce the human interactions with IT systems and uh, this is good because first of all we are saving a lot of time, uh, then we are decreasing the errors that we are making by manually executing commands again and again. Uh, and from my experience, I can say that automation is uh, very, very useful when it comes to server provisioning, uh, application deployment, configuration management, or if you, uh, even continuous delivery. And now uh, to the point, what is Ansible? If I should uh, explain it without going into technical terms, I would say that Ansible is a software that allows us to uh, create uh, tasks and execute them to replace the things that we are doing manually every day. It is uh, really simple, but at the same time, very pow powerful uh, software, which is agentless, and it's only using SSH to connect to the remote machines we are working on. Uh, and uh, of course, you don't have to, uh, to, you don't need any specific SSH skills to have. Uh, it is just the software using that type of connection to the remote systems and uh, you don't need to uh, create bash scripts or anything like that. And uh, more, most of the definitions and the configuration files in Ansible are uh, written in YAML. So it's uh, really uh, easy to read and understand even by inexperienced users. So, and that's what I like the most because it's practically human readable. And uh, these are the cases which I think are uh, more often uh, the, the most common cases when we use Ansible. As I mentioned, uh, provisioning, application deployment, configuration management, and continuous delivery. And uh, now some theory about Ansible and its parts. Uh, I don't. I, I know that we don't like theory, but uh, we need to go through this uh, in order to have the practical examples more understandable at the end. So in order to avoid speaking with technical terms only, I'm trying to uh, compare Ansible with something from the real world, and uh, that is a car assembly line. So what we have whenever we are making a car is a specific set of instructions that are executed every time we made each model, right? So it's the same with Ansible. The Ansible playbook, which is the main part of the ser uh, service, is a set of instructions that are executed in a certain way, in a certain order. These instructions, uh, whenever, when we are in the car factory, we have a lot of machines, right? So each machine there is doing something 
And that's exactly what modules are in Ansible. They are small programs that are designed to perform small, simple tasks. And uh, they are based on parameters that we pass in our configuration files. So there are a list of modules on the Ansible sites, and there are literally hundreds. But uh, if by chance there is a service you are using and there is no module for that, you can write your own. And uh, speaking of the machines in the car factory, each of them has a uh, completely and uh, specifically defined task. For example, there are machines that are forming the metal parts, uh, machines that are putting stuff under the hood, right? So uh, we have the same thing in Ansible. We are defining tasks uh, in YAML syntax, and then uh, these tasks are executed with the help of the modules that uh, I mentioned before that. And all car manufacturers have uh, different models. They have cars with uh, different colors and so on. So uh, in the IT world, uh, whenever we have 10 or 20 systems, we might want to execute the same set of instructions on each of them, but at the same time, uh, we want to keep the difference between uh, the systems. We might have some different configuration files or something like that. So that's how Ansible handles the difference between our systems is with using variables and templates. Uh, handlers are practically small and very simple tasks that are uh, triggered after the execution of another task. So right here in the example, we have defined handler, which is restarting Apache service. And in the next slide, uh, we have a task that is practically replacing the Apache configuration file with the template I'm passing to it. So with that notify line here at the end, I'm specifying that uh, I want to trigger the handler that I have specified in the previous slide. So what this block of code will do is uh, it will replace the template with the source I have provided. And after that, the Apache service will be restarted to apply the changes. And at the end, we have rows which are pretty much a combination of uh, all the parts I've said so far. Uh, rows are pretty comfortable way to uh, gather groups of tasks, variables, modules, and uh, which are related to one and the same server services. For example, if I want to install and configure Apache all the way from the beginning to the end, uh, I would have tasks for uh, downloading the package, installing the package, then I need to uh, adjust the vehicles, then configuration files and so on. And all of these tasks uh, might be grouped in uh, one single row, which is called with just one line, instead of calling each task separately in your playbook. Okay, now enough about Ansible only. Let's see uh, why I think Ansible is uh, great to use with WordPress. And uh, I know that there are a lot of one-click installers or applications that allow you to manage your WordPress uh, dashboards of different sites, but uh, it's cool to have everything that in one single application or software which actually is installed on your computer and you don't need to log in anywhere to manage your sites, right? So uh, I would say that Ansible would be very useful whenever we want to have uh, WordPress deployed somewhere. And I'm not talking only about the WordPress core. I'm talking about uh, creating a bundle, for example, with your uh, favorite plugins or themes, which you want to have pre-installed every time you install the WordPress. So. Uh, as well as uh, environment changes. For example, if you're running WordPress in subfolder, uh, what you usually do, I think, is that uh, you are installing the WordPress with the one-click installer or whatever, and then you go and manually changes adjust the WordPress, uh, manually adjust the WordPress to work in subfolder, which actually can be automated, and you can have everything uh, defined in Ansible and executed automatically without without you having to do anything. <coughs> Uh, another useful example would be managing plugins of uh, a lot of sites. I don't know how much of you here are managing most of five sites or ten sites which are on different servers, but uh, it is a good way to have, for example, uh, install 
to install or update the plugin on all of your applications, uh, no matter if they are uh, located on the same or different servers, no matter. Uh, also, Ansible is a very good option if you want to automate your code deployments because it has Git and Subversion modules. And uh, of course, I think that um, it's very useful whenever it comes to any tasks that you are executing via SSH. I mean, not only related to WordPress as an application itself, but uh, whenever you need to, uh, let's say, change permissions of files or uh, update your htaccess file or php.in file, it is basically, you can automate everything that you're uh, doing manually in SSH. And we reach the practical examples. First of all, I would like to... Can you see it well? Yeah. Okay. Uh, first of all, I'd like to show my Ansible project folder, which is, uh, I've created it, it's very simple, and I've just created it for here, for this conference, to show you uh, what I have in it. First of all, I have a playbooks folder, where obviously I keep my playbooks that I will uh, show you in the videos after that. Um, then I have roles that I have written and I will be executed, uh, which will be executed in my playbooks later. And I have this host file here, which is actually a very important part of uh, Ansible and it's called inventory. The inventory file contains the information about your hosts and uh, you can also specify some variables there. I know that security is very important as well as you, I'm sure, but uh, this is just an example. Don't mind, uh, for example, I have uh, plain, pass plain text passwords here or something like that. Just ignore it. I know you need to keep your safe sites and don't, uh, don't do that at home. Uh, so right here, Oops. these are uh, group names. Uh, one group can contain multiple hosts. In my case, I have one host in each, in each group here. Uh, then you have the host name, which can be pretty much everything you want. Uh, Ansible port and Ansible hosts are very important uh, variables because they are used by the software to connect via SSH to the server. And then you can add pretty much uh, whatever variables you want in order to um, suit your roles and your playbooks, whatever you need. In my case, I have database username, password, WordPress directory where I will install my WordPress, and then memcached host and memcached port. So, oops. The first, in the first example is uh, is related to it in uh, deploying an application, a WordPress application. And this is my playbook here, which will do that for me. Uh, as you can see, I have defined two plays, install WordPress core and install initial, initial plugins, which is a typo, but okay. Uh, so in that first play, I'm calling one row, which is called install WordPress core and then I'm calling three more tasks separately, which are create database and create database users. They are pretty straightforward, so I'm not gonna uh, open and uh, review them. And at the end, I have configure WordPress. In just a moment to... The main.yml file is a file that is executed every time uh, you are calling a row. I mean, it's executed first uh, by default and every time you are uh, calling a row. So in my main.yml file, I have two tasks. 
First, the feature we, uh, is ensure WordPress destination directory is present, which is creating my directory where the WordPress will be hosted. And the second one is actually a WPCLI command, where I'm using it to uh, download the files, the core files of the application. Uh, the first task here, you can see that is uh, defined using the file module, which in Ansible is a module uh, which is create, uh, creates files, directories, and in that case, I am specifying that I want to create a WordPress directory variable here, which should be in state directory. It might be state file or star, uh, state absent, which will remove that. And uh, the second task is downloading the file, which is uh, I'm using the command module. The command module is a pretty flexible thing because it's like you're just uh, executing some message command via bash or on the remote server. So what I'm doing here is passing this bash command to all my uh, remote hosts that I'm running Ansible on. And now let's get to the videos. Okay, there you go. Stopping for a second. Uh, just to tell you that uh, Ansible can be used in common line mode. Not only defining uh, playbooks and writing uh, YAML code in order to have it executed, but uh, in this in this uh, example, you can see that I'm using the Ansible uh, binary and passing some parameters which will actually execute the command I'm specifying in the quotes on all of my uh, hosts I have defined in my inventory. And the purpose of what I'm showing you now is to show you that uh, before running the playbook, there is uh, nothing on the servers. Uh, you can see that I'm trying to access this folder and it is not existing at the moment. Uh, then I'm going to show that there is no databases created also on, on the servers. And there we go. And then I am executing the actual command that will start our playbook execution, uh, which has some important parameters here. The I parameter specified the inventory file that uh, I'm using, which contains the information of the remote hosts. Uh, then I'm specifying here the uh, name of the playbook. And then I'm passing some extra variables that are needed uh, in order to have my roles executed correctly. Uh, the first task by default is this thing called gathering facts which is practically going through your Ansible directory, uh, checking the files and uh, getting information about the variables. And then we start uh, with the tasks, one by one executed on each host simultaneously. Here I'm going to stop for a second just to show you that uh, there is a slight difference between creating database and creating database users. So first we have uh, change status, and then we have OK status. Uh, what this means is that Ansible is actually remembering states of the tasks, and uh, I have created the database user before running the playbook. So the Ansible did not took any action. It just saw that the user is already created, and it's reporting the task as OK, because there is nothing more to do there. Uh, and then I have configuring and installing WordPress, which is actually WPCLI commands. Uh, configure and install. And then after that we are going to the second play which would install uh, the plugin we have specified there. Which are four plugins I have picked randomly. And at the end of each play we have that play recap which is uh, actually a summary of what we have uh, done so far. Uh, after that, I'm again using the Ansible command in order to show you that after the play there is actually some content on the servers. And uh, the, first, the first thing is to show you that there is a WordPress core files 
inside the directory we have created. Uh, then using the MySQL command line in order to show you that there are databases created and the WordPress core tables are actually there on each host separately. <coughs> and in the end, uh, again running uh, WPCLI plugin list command in order to show you that we don't only have the core installations there, but uh, we now have four installations with the plugins we have specified pre-installed there without having to do that manually. <coughs> so this was the first example as a whole. Of course, it's, it's very simple, but uh, you can add so much more there if you want and if you have any uh, customizations that you, have, you need to do on your site. The second thing is managing plugins and teams. And as I said, uh, whenever we are managing 20 sites, and uh, I'm not sure, but I, I personally don't know which installation has any specific plugin. So whenever you see a, that uh, a plugin is outdated, and you might want to check if uh, it's need to be updated on your sites, Ansible is very good thing to uh, automate that because it can go through all of your applications and update the plugin where it is present. Uh, let me check the next video. There you go. So again, I'm using Ansible binary in order to delete the plugin called Booking only on two of my projects. So uh, I will have this plugin installed on two WordPresses and then I will have it uh, deleted from the rest of the two, uh, rest of the hosts. So waiting for the confir confirmation message here. Uh, then quick check with uh, is installed option in order to see and confirm that this plugin is uh, not present on these WordPresses. There you go. And now running again the Ansible playbook command, which will start executing the next playbook I have, which is called plugins.yml. Again, specifying the inventory file and passing some extra bars so that the uh, row can be executed properly. Gathering facts again. Uh, there we have uh, this message, the bug message, which is doing nothing, just displaying some information I wanted to show you because it is a good way to debug whenever your playbook is failing or getting an error or there is an undefined variable. The debug message is a good way to see uh, what value has, uh, does the variable contains and it's just used to display some information. Uh, then I have uh, checking a plugin function which had something red there, so it failed. And actually, this is the uh, another thing. There we go. We have uh, failures on uh, two of our hosts. And uh, the thing is that uh, whenever there is a playbook, for example, on four hosts, and whenever a task fails on one host, it is excluded until the rest of the play. So what this playbook does is to uh, first to check all of my hosts if the plugin is uh, installed and then if it's installed uh, to update it. And since we don't have it on these two hosts, they're excluded now from the play. And uh, at the end we have, we have here the task for update only on the hosts that actually have the plugin present. And here it is the recap again. This time we have uh, two failed hosts as we understood it. And uh, yeah, then just a quick check to see that uh, the booking plugin is actually installed only on two of our hosts.
There you go. We have two hosts uh, which have the plugin installed and uh, then we have two which doesn't have it. <coughs> so moving on to the last example, which is actually an example where you, uh, you are using a, a Git module and what it does is to download, uh, in fact it's a copy uh, a repo which contains a memcache drop-in, then deploy it on our four hosts and then uh, checking if, uh, uh, then replacing the host and the port inside the object, uh, object cache PHP uh, to with the variables we want. So again, gathering fast real, uh, facts real fast. <coughs> Here we, we are cloning the, the repo, then we are synchronizing the file to uh, our hosts. Fixing some permissions and ownerships. And at the end, I'm using a uh, replace module which you pass a string to and it's it is replacing replacing it with another string so pretty much the result here can be seen we now have the object cache.php file and we have changed the host and the port inside that file on all of my four hosts without uh, having to do anything manually And the last example, I don't have any videos uh, of it because it's very simple and I mean that whenever you need to change uh, HT access or php.in or wp-config file or uh, a lot of applications, uh, Ansible is very good uh, choice in order to do that automated and uh, do not do it manually. So in my opinion, combining Ansible and WordPress would save you a lot of time and uh, What's even better is that you don't, don't need to have 50 applications in order to use Ansible. You can start really small with really simple tasks, for, for example, a task only for changing permissions, then start running on your projects, and as your project, uh, projects grow, your Ansible code base will uh, grow gradually with it. That was all, thank you very much for the attention. And if you have any questions, So I'm just going to ask, so you are using the WordPress command line tools for the yep. changes that are directly inside WordPress, right? Yeah. So if I'm running my whole setup in the Docker and everything be authorized, uh, what would be the good way if, you, if I don't want to put the WordPress binary, command line binary into my Docker? Uh, well, Ansible, in my case, is just using that binary in order to uh, have the plugins and the application installed. So I presume that you have installed WPCLY already. But uh, if you haven't, you can do everything, pretty much everything, as you do it in SSH command line. So in order, you can also uh, use, uh, I don't know, wget or any uh, Linux command in order to download the package, unzip to extract the package and so on. So it's just more tasks defining and uh, it's a little bit more work. Oh, thank you. Um, hi, I'm David. How does this work in the team environment? Because it looks like it has uh, the playbook and everything lives on your own computer, right? So how will it work in the team environment? I uh, didn't understand the question. Can you repeat? <laughs> okay, so uh, it looks like your playbook uh, are stored in your local machine, but what if I want to share these uh, uh, workflows with other members of my team? Uh -huh. Well, uh, personally in my team we have all of our Ansible configuration in a git repo, so whenever someone wants to use it, just uh, cloning the repo and reuses the tasks and the roles and everything, so it's 
pretty much comfortable to have it in a Git repo or, or on a machine, on a control machine, when everybody can log in and use it. Do we have any more questions? Maybe the last one. Yeah, I mentioned that uh, this example was not secure at all, but it was created only for the purpose of this conference. But uh, for example, Ansible has different modules where you can randomly generate password, uh, record it in a variable, and then use this variable uh, without, any, without having the password actually displayed anywhere. I think um, that's all we have. Thanks for sharing. Thank you very much.